Hello, in this PCSX2 video, I'm going to show you how to connect your PlayStation 5 DualSense controller to your Windows machine. Let me just turn this off. So yeah, on Windows, if you want to learn how to do a Mac Linux, I'll have separate videos covering that. And I've got videos how to connect like your PS4 controller, your Xbox controller, feel free to check them out. So to, to do this, you have one or two options. You can go down the Bluetooth route, and I'll show you how to do that as well. Or you can go down the wired route, and this is the one I'll be doing. And you'll need USB-C on one end. You can use like the cable that you use to charge the controller. And on the other end, USB-C can work if you have a computer that has a USB-C port, like you know at the front. That's where you'll probably want to access or like some sort of extension lead. Maybe it's a laptop on there that has it. So if you like it's an older machine, like a custom build, you might not. You'll need USB-C to USB-A, but I'm sure you can figure that out. If not, feel free to you know pop me a message. So to connect it to my Bluetooth, super simple. You don't need any extra software. You don't even need DS for Windows or anything like that anymore. So what you want to do is a search for Bluetooth. And I'm on Windows 10. You can do this on Windows like 11 as well, Windows 7. You know, the process is basically the same. <clears throat> and Windows 8. So go to add Bluetooth, click Bluetooth. But before we do that, I'll uh, we'll make sure he hasn't already got paired. Yes. Click add Bluetooth, Bluetooth, and one second. Add Bluetooth. Before I click that, let's put this into pairing mode. To do that, you press the share button on the left hand side of the controller and the PlayStation button at the same time, and the LED will start flashing. And you can see it is now flashing. And if I click Bluetooth, DualSense controller. You just click that and it will connect. I'm not going to connect it this way and I'm just going to turn the pairing mode off. The reason I'm not doing it this way, I know my controller's battery is pretty low and it'll probably just disconnect after a few seconds. So I want to go down the wired route, but if you want to go down the wireless route, both is fine. So I'm going to click, plug it in. Here we go. Okay, so. So as you can see, there's a light on there, and your light might be different color, and it's just because I've got PCSX2 open and I've set it to a specific color. I will show you that as well in a second. And what I would like to do is type in game and go to set up USB game controllers. And this actually works even if it's a wireless controller as well. So I say set up USB, but it can be wireless. And it's detected as wireless even though it's plugged in. Don't ask me why. Go to property. If I start pressing stuff on here, I'm moving analog six. If that if this is recognizing the inputs, you're good to go. If it isn't, or this screen isn't there, or this the wireless controller isn't appearing, there's something's gone wrong. Try reconnecting, and if not, you know, post a comment down below, and we'll see what we can do. So open PCSX2. Now we need to set up the configuration. Go to settings, controllers, and from here. Select DualShock 4 DualSense Enhanced Mode, and it'll disappear, then reappear again. And go to the the control LED, LED setting. So if I click that, and let's say if I want red, for example, click red, click OK, it's now changing it to red. And obviously, if we have multiple controllers connected, you can change the LED from multiple controllers. That's pretty cool. They can change it to the exact one that you want. Go to DualShock on my controller port 1. Feel free to do it for controller port 2 and multi tap as well. And for bindings, you, I recommend you go to automatic mapping, SDL, zero, PS5 controller, and that's it. It will automatically map the controls and you're all good to go. That's it. You can override it. So let's say if I click up on the D-pad and I press square, put the other X because it's, you know, mapping it in line with like an Xbox controller. But, you know, let's click up. There we go. That's all you have to do. Feel free to, you know, override any of the mapping that you want to do. You can clear and just do all of them yourself. Feel free to. I, honestly, it's not much point doing it unless, unless you want to, let's say, if I just move this up a bit, is you can see at the bottom, you can create a profile. The benefit of creating a profile is you can have different profiles for different games, different game genres. Maybe you want a different profile for, you know, FPS, different profile for a, like, an adventure game like Crash Bandicoot different well, that's a platformer really but yeah different profile for a racing game you can do that or different profiles for different games different users you can do all that sort of stuff once you've done that you're pretty much good to go the last thing i want to show you is in settings 
you can change some of the settings like the dead zone. So if you know your analog six has to be dead zone, you can modify that. Oh, let me, let me look, look, I'll leave that as is. And in the macros, feel free to add some macros. If you want to do something like press two buttons at the same time, you can do that right here. And that's it. Click close. And now you can launch up a game. So if I launch up Crash Tag Team Racing, I'm pretty sure I have a safe state for this game. Just ignore that sound. That's just my automatic blinds coming down because it's at sunset now. I would state. Thought I had a state. I did not have a state. So no audio because I've turned the speakers off. Yep, speakers are off. All the volume down, all the way down to zero. And I just want to get into the menu really and just ah, it's Crash Nitro card. I have the. There you go, as you can see, it's working. Press X and click done. Yeah, that's fine. If Crash Nitro Car, where I have the save state, because that's the one I usually use to test. I don't usually use Crash Tag Team Racing to test you know, for these videos, hence why I might use Crash Tag Team Racing now. Click single player, I mean, whatever you want, really. <laughs> some birds, roosters, chickens. Come on, let me skip. Ah, oh, is this not a skippable? Yes, let me skip it. So as you see, I'm playing it. It's all working. Forgot that this one you had a bit of platforming as well. Crash tag team racing. I remember playing that on my PSP. That was a PSP game for me. Man, I miss those PSP days. A lot, you know, I've got a Steam. I've, you can start watching the video <laughs> right now if you want to. Be fair, you know, I, I've got a Steam Deck as well and a, and a Nintendo Switch. Don't get me wrong, they're great platforms, but they're just. I mean, don't get me wrong. When I was a kid, I always wanted to be able to play the regular games that I had on PC, that I had on my PlayStation, for example, PlayStation Two on the go so it's nice to be able to do that but it's i remember having the feeling you know because it was different you know there, there were different games right now sometimes i feel like do i want to play it on the steam deck do i want to play on the nintendo switch when i can play it on the big tv at home and then sometimes i miss out on some gaming when i'm out you know when i could play you know some portable gaming just because i say to myself uh i rather play on the big screen and then you know don't get time to do it you know, something comes up whereas with psp you would play PSP game on PSP and that was it. Yes, some did get released onto PlayStation 2 as well afterwards, like Liberty City Stories, Vice City Stories, those sort of games. But for the, you know, by and large, most PSP games, or at least the best ones, were exclusives to PSP only. Yeah, I'm just going to end it right here. I'm just going to put a save state. Save, and that's it. So that is how you connect your PlayStation 5 DualSense controller to Windows to play it on PCSX2. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the Discord group, link in the description, or down below in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to get notified of all new emulator content. And let me know what other controllers and other emulator videos you would like to see next. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.